In this video, I'm going to go through um, viewing the composite images and exporting the composite images into Google Drive and then subsequently processing those images into a form that's ready for publication. So giving a bit of an overview of that workflow. Now, obviously this might change a little bit in the future, but this is basically what the process is at the moment. Um, at the moment, I'm working on the draft version of the data set and its purpose is to get a first approximation of all the images so we can really see what are all the things that we can tell uh, from the Sentinel imagery. So what I've got here is I've got the Google Earth engine open. I've got the uh, repository that has the main tools that we're using, which is these uh, selecting of the images. Now we went through this in a previous video, selecting images and setting them up in this create composite script. Now this composite script has does two main functions. It generates the reference um, imagery and the second. So there's two versions of the imagery. There's the best imagery, which I'm calling reference one imagery and then the next best quality of imagery, which is reference two. For the reference one, we generate um, multiple styles, essentially. We pull out the true color imagery, which is good for viewing uh, really bright things like the islands and the shallow areas of reefs. We have another style, which is uh, deep marine so it really stretches the blue and the green and the red for maximum contrast of viewing deep features there's the reef top which uh, tries to estimate where the reef tops are from the red channel and create sort of like a, an almost a binary mask that we can subsequently process into polygons automatically and then there's a shallow estimate which is based on the red and near infrared channels so that really that imagery tells us what's really shallow and dry and that should help with mapping the k's and islands and then our reference to imagery which is just basically our second set of imagery so that we can check that when we're looking at a feature that's a deep feature and it's a little bit fuzzy knowing whether we're looking at an anomaly caused by a cloud or something like that, um, we can look at the reference to imagery and compare it and see whether we can see the same feature. Um, so that that's basically the setup of those ones. Um, and as we go through, you'll see that in this structure in the program where you've got the two images that are produced the reference one imagery and the reference two imagery and there's two parameters for each one the first parameter the first true or false indicates whether it should generate a preview image and the second one is to whether it should generate an export um, and essentially we don't we pretty much process them in batches because it takes a long time to generate them in google earth and it takes a long time to download them. In theory, you could set them all to true, but you might overload Google Earth and also overload your Google Drive in terms of downloading all the data. Um, yeah. Okay, so in this case, I've already exported quite a few images. And so each batch where I'm up to, um, the true is set. So this is the last lot of images that I process. So I'm going to set them to false. Okay, so these are the next few that I've um, just produced. 
So what I'm going to do is set them to true to display them initially, just so we can have a bit of a quick, oops, a quick preview of them to see whether they're all right. If we we're very carefully trying to select the best imagery, then we would use this display version to see whether we'd really pick the best images. Um, for this draft version, I'm not too concerned about that because <laughs> I'm just trying to do it quickly. Now, when we run it, we'll get nothing will happen. Um, but when we look at these layers, then you can see that these are all the ones which will be generated. Now, the script doesn't automatically zoom to the right spot. So you might need a bit of a reference <laughs> uh, to find where you're supposed to zoom in. And also the map layer is not particularly helpful. So I'll just turn on this one here, which was 56 KMF. So that's down here. So there'll be just a bit of a tip here. Oh, and by luck, because I guess I was processing these images, um, the scene was in the right spot. Okay, so we can see that the final image that's produced, it looks pretty clean. Although if we get in, if we zoom in, I've got to wait for it to re-render. We can see that there's quite a bit of noise in here. Um, that's from clouds. It's all right. Let's try this other one. I'm not exactly sure which one is the reference imagery since it, it truncates the name here. Maybe I shouldn't do that. Okay, ah, so we can see here, this is the reference one imagery. It's much cleaner around the reefs. There's a little bit, you can see these clouds, which have been masked out, but since there's no reef features there, it's not so important. And then this one is our reference two imagery, which is not as clean because it had so many more clouds in the images that we collected. We can look at the shallow areas. Now in these images, like we can see these individual reef features, um, basically these dark blue represents areas which are kind of under five meters in depth. And when it changes to a paler color, like it changes to a greeny color, then it's almost shallow, like it's probably under half a meter. And a lot of these sort of aqua areas, that's actually the breaking waves. It's not actually shallow. I mean, it is shallow because that's why there's breaking waves, but you wouldn't classify that as a depth rating. So pretty much from this image, you would say there's no coral caves in this area um, because they would stand out much more clearly. And the reef top layer, I'll just, is based on the red channel. And so it's actually slightly deeper than the blue that we see in the shallow one. And then the true color image is one which is doesn't have such brightness. Uh, it's not it's not as stretched in contrast, so you can see all the features what they would more naturally look like. Okay, so now we've done a preview and we're pretty happy with that imagery, then um, we can set the display off again and set it to export. I might do all of these. So each tile has five images that get exported. Those were those different styles that I spoke about earlier. 
and that's where we're up to at the moment. So now when we run this, we'll see that it generates all these tasks. So these are tasks which are run, they don't run in the browser, but they run on the Google server. And from there, all the, they basically export the full resolution image into the attached Google Drive. So when I run one of these, you'll see that it, it basically says, I'm gonna save it to Google Drive in this particular folder. Um, the defaults for all of these should be fine as is. So you just hit run. And then once you've done that, you can just hit run on each of those and then they will run in the background. Each one takes about 10 minutes and they all pretty much run in parallel. So when you come back in 10 minutes or so, um, they'll all be done. So I'll just pause it here and um, I'll finish off that list. Okay, so I've started all those tasks. This whole panel doesn't really refresh very well. So you could be waiting for an hour and it still says that they're going even though they're finished. Um, sometimes it's useful to open up this task manager and in the task manager it will, you'll see the running tasks here and then you'll be able to stop them or cancel them if you really want to. When the files are actually done, uh, you'll need to log into Google Drive and then you'll see the actual files. So we'll come back in 10 minutes or so and then we'll see whether we've got any files. It's been more than 15 minutes and all the jobs have finished now. We can see that here. And if we go over the Google um, Drive, we can see they're all available here for download. Now you can select all of them and download them via zips. Um, or you can just download them individually. And it'll bring up a warning. And then we need to find where we're Now, once we've downloaded all of these files, they need to be processed so that they're ready for um, publishing on the web, adding overviews into the images and um, yeah, and for subsequent processing. So I'll go into that in, a, and in another video uh, in more detail. All right. So that's the general process for generating the composite images. We need a Google Drive account um, and yeah, all right.